Hey guys, welcome to part 13 of this learning management system tutorial series. Today we are going to make it possible to embed YouTube videos in the lessons and then we are going to start the progress of tracking implementation so we can see which lessons and courses we have begun. So let's begin with embedding YouTube videos. First you need to open up and do some changes to the models. So open up course slash models.py here we need to add one more choice to the type of lesson, so just video equals video and then we need to append it to the tuple down here, video, video and save. So we also need to do one more change to this database model because we need one field for filling out the ID of the YouTube. So YouTube ID equals models dot char field, that's a good choice for storing this type of things. So max length comes up to 20 because a YouTube ID is usually just 10 characters or similar. We also need to add blank equals true and null equals true because not all lessons needs a video. So then we can save this and then we can go to the command line, stop the web server and update the database. And to do that you just add python, sorry python3, manage.py make migrations maybe you have alias and just use python but this is what i do now and then python 3 manage.py migrate so now we have the new field and also change the lesson type a little bit maybe this is something old but yeah and then we can just run the server again so then we have that Next step then is to do some changes to the serializer here. Because right now we get the information about this, but we also need to get the YouTube ID here. So we need to just append YouTube ID like that and save. So now this data should actually be available already in the front end if it's there. So let's go to the back end and add one. So if I go to the browser and log in here. Like that. Then I can go into the lessons and I can create one more lesson here. Just add it to the same course as everybody else. So lesson with video, lesson with video, short desk, long desk, and then down here we have the new field. And I also need to select video there. So then I can save this. And you can see here that you also get to filter by video here and you can also see which lesson type we have there. So that's everything for the back end. And if I now go to courses and into programming course one, you'll see that they have the lesson with video, but we don't have the video there yet. So we need to go to the code again and do some changes. Just like I created one for the quiz and similar in the previous part, I want to create one more component for the video. So video.view and then I can add the template tag here and close template. I want one property from the parent, so we need to add a script tag and export default props and the property is YouTube ID. And then up here we add a div class video container. Just close that div. And then in here we use the iframe we get from YouTube. iframe set the video width to 100%. Then we can set the height to 400. And then we need to set something called the frame border. This is for styling, so set this to zero, allow, do some changes here, accelerometer, I'm not sure if you need this or what, but we get this from, from YouTube, so I like to add it, autoplay, encrypted, dash media, oops, and gyroscope, picture in picture and I also want to make it possible to allow full screen so allow full 
screen. This is just attribute without any value. So now we can close the iframe. Then I want to move these to separate lines just so it's a little bit easier to see. And then we just need to add the source attribute. We can add that at the top here. SRC https colon slash slash youtube oops www.youtube.com slash embed and then here I want to pass in the YouTube ID which I get from down here like that but this would just result in this string so you need to make it possible to write the JavaScript in here and to do that we just add the colon there and then we need to convert this to a string like that so now it will take this string and combine it and put it together with this sorry I forgot a slash there so now this component should be ready to be used so if I scroll down and find course.view now you can begin by importing the component video video and register it down here video so if I then scroll up here where we have the quiz and similar let's just make a copy of this if lesson type is video then we bind video pass in the video sorry not video there was supposed to be video here should be active lesson dot youtube id and save so now it looks like that so then we can see if there are errors now so let's try to see if it works lesson with video and then it's there let's try to play it actually there seems to be an error Yes, this is undefined, so the ID is missing here. And I think it's because it was added as an attribute there. And I probably did something wrong here. The bind is supposed to be called YouTube ID as well. So now you can see here it's embedded and it's now working. Perfect. So then we can actually go to the to-do list and set the first task to done. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. Next step is to start the progress of tracking implementation. So first we can begin by creating a new app. Stop the web server, Python 3, manage it by start app. I want to call this activity because I want to log what activity the user does. So hit enter. Then we can go to settings.py and register it here with installed apps, activity, and save. So now that that's done, we can set this subtask to done and then we can create the database model. So find the app here in the list, activity, and then models.py. Here I want to import the user model from Django. So from Django.contrib.auth.models import user. So then we can have a reference between the model and that user. And I also want to import the course and lesson because the activity needs to be connected to those as well. So from course.models import course and lesson. And then we can create the class, class activity, pass in models dot model as usual, and then we can begin with the course reference, course equals models dot foreign key. Now we just pass in the model object here, and we set the related name to be activities, activities like that. And if you delete an, uh, a course, you also want to delete all of the activity. So here we just say model.cascade. 
So then we can make a copy of this because I want this exact uh, uh, exact same thing for the lesson. Plus in lesson here as well. And then I want the created by, which is also very similar. Created by user. And when the activity was logged, so created at equals models dot date time field and add the attribute auto now add equals true so we don't have to fill it out ourselves. But we should also have a less uh, one more field here called status so we can see if the activity is started or if it's set to done. So we can begin by setting this property started equals started and done equals done. And then we can create the list or tuple status choices equals create empty tuple pass in the started and then add the label done done and then we can just add it in here status equals models dot char field max length can be set to 10 choices should be set to status choices and the default one can be started. Default started and save. So then we can go to the command line and run the migration script, make migrations and then migrate. So now we have the new model activity. Nice. So now we can run the server, go back to the code again. So now we have this and then we want to create a new view where we get the active courses from the database. So if you open up activity slash views.py, we can begin adding it here. First you need to import two things from the REST framework. But I can just copy it from one of the other views here. So let's take the API view and the response. Then go here and paste it. And then I want to import the activity model, so from dot models import activity. And I want to import the course list serializers because we want to list out the courses on my account page. So from course dot serializers import course list serializer. Now you can create the view, API view. And this should only accept get request because this is something we want to get from the database. Now we say def get active courses pass in the request. Oops, request parameter. So what we want to get here now is all courses that has one activity that is started. So let's create a new list, an empty list for the courses we want to send to the front end. Now we can get all the activities for the active user. Activities equals request.user.activities.all. So then we get all of these. And then I want to loop through them. So for activity in activities. And then I want to check that uh, if that course isn't already in this list and that the activity status is started, then I want to append it to this list. So if activity dot status equals activity dot started and activity dot course not in courses, then I want to append it. So courses dot append activity, no sorry, activity.course because we want to get the course from that activity. And then we can set up the serializer equals course list serializer and we can just pass in this list courses and set many equals true because there are more than one. At least we want a list. And then we can just say return response and pass in the serializer dot data. But since we just use this one place, we can actually just remove it from there, paste it like that, so it's a little bit cleaner, and save. 
So now we have the view for getting what we want. We are going to build out this more throughout this series, but it's a, at least it's a beginning. So we can set this to done. And then I want to create a new URLs file for this app. So inside activity, create a new file, urls.py. And then we can begin by importing path from Django. Django.urls import path. And now we can import all of the views from this app from dot import views. Then we just import this file. URL patterns equals oops path get active courses slash and then views dot get active courses and save. Last thing then is to just add this to the main urls.py file. So we can copy this activities and activity and save. So now the urls is also ready. So we can set this to done. Next I just want to create a quick test. So if you open up my account, just want to see that we get this data from the server. So above methods, you can say mounted to go into that lifecycle hook. And here we use axios dot get activities, which is the URLs there. You remember that we added this in the main file. So activity slash get active courses slash and then we get some data back here. And I can just say dot then response, create a fat arrow function. And then we can log the information to the console. Console log response.data and save. So no errors. So go to here, go to my account, get a 500 error. So let's see why the user has no attribute activities activities so that's a typo there so that was in views.py i think oops activities like that so and this attribute here is of course this related name here so let's try again just to refresh then i got an empty response back but that's okay because we don't have any activities but if I go to activity slash admin.py, you can register it here. From dot models import activity admin.site.register activity and save. So now it's there. So we can add it programming course one. Lesson there started and is created by Kodwitstein. So save. And the refresh and now we got some data back here you can see that we got the id image short and everything you need to show the course here later but that was it for this part so you can set this to done like that hope you enjoyed this part and if you did please hit like below if you want notification when the next part is out you need to subscribe to my channel and also remember to click the bell see you in the next video